How you doing, John? Hey guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate y'all joining our live stream fishing show. Sorry for the late start. We had a little bit of technical difficulties, but it looks like we're up and running now. So we're going to get started here in just a few moments. Thanks for being patient, guys. Happy Sunday night, Facebook. Thanks for tuning in. Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina. We're a little live, we're a little late for our live stream show. I apologize for that, guys. Um, but I appreciate you uh, hanging in with us and uh, staying patient as we get this live stream show up and running. I had a little technical difficulty and uh, I was running a little behind getting these videos. We have a lot of videos for you tonight, so it took a little longer than expected to get these videos up and running. Um, but we got a crazy good deal on a 39-hour trip. Uh, we're going to have uh, some awesome, awesome chances to go on our 39-hour fishing trip uh, with us at Hubbard's Marina for a great price. And uh, we got lots of really cool videos, including an inshore fishing video. Tonight's live stream shores show is going to have more uh, inshore fishing information than ever before. So hopefully you guys are looking forward to some really cool inshore fishing tips and tricks and some great inshore fishing photos. And of course, we always have our offshore fishing photos and nearshore fishing photos. And we're going to talk a lot about fishing tips and tricks and answer your questions as well. We got all that coming up here shortly. Again, I apologize for the late start. Uh, that is my bad. It was a little bit difficult for me, and I apologize. But we're going to be starting up here very shortly. Thank you for your patience. Now that we got everything up and running, I just need a few seconds to get all our ducks in a row, and we will get started. Uh, Good morning, Brian. There we go. Our last video just got up. So that is some good news. And um, hopefully some people are ready to win some free trips. As always, we're going to give away some free fishing trips tonight. Uh, and remember, in order to win those free fishing trips, you do have to be signed in. Or, excuse me, you do have to comment on the Hubbard's Marina uh, Facebook stream. So if you're watching on YouTube, hop over to Facebook for a second. Hop to Hubbard's Marina's Facebook page. Leave a comment on the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream, and that's going to make you eligible to win. Just one comment's all you need, guys. Keep in mind, we filter duplicate comments. So if you'd rather watch on Facebook, or uh, if you'd rather watch on YouTube, you're welcome to watch on YouTube. Um, but you do have to comment at least one on the uh, Hubbard's Marina YouTube or the Hubbard's Marina Facebook stream. And uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get started. Randy Kessel, Facebook live stream is up. Uh, it's been up now for a little bit shorter than the YouTube one. Uh, I was having a little problems there. But the, if you go to the Hubbard's Marina Facebook page, you can find our live stream video. You can comment, and that gives you a chance to win. But don't worry, guys. you got lots of time to do that. So, Randy, you have time to go pop over there and find it. But... We are up on Facebook, we are up on YouTube, and we're going to get started here very shortly. We got some inshore fishing photos, we got some old school history photos, we got our 39 hour photos, you got a killer deal on a 39 hour trip, we're actually giving a discount on a 39 hour trip, first time ever, we have ever in the history of my time with Hubbard's Marina ever discounted our 39 hour trip. It is only $299, that's $299 instead of $369, but that's for this Tuesday, May 14th only. So this Tuesday, May 14th, you can hop on a 39 hour trip for $299 instead of $369. So great deal there. And uh, I think you guys are ready. I think you're ready to uh, watch some live stream action. So let's get this show on the road. How are you guys doing tonight? Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching. I get this tilted back up here. 
<laughs> there we go. Thanks for tuning in to our Sunday night live stream show with us here at Hubbard's Marina. We're going to give away a five-hour half-day fishing trip for two guests, a 10-hour all-day fishing trip for two guests, and we're going to talk all about fishing. So let's get right into it, and uh, let's look at some 39-hour videos and uh, see a little bit of some big fish coming in here. Big old gag. Nice fish. Nice gag. These gags open up June first. Yep. We're ready for a big gag to come June first. That is a lip nice gag. Man. We gotta lift them up. Just get them over the rails so we can bend them properly. And then these will get the same to put the hook in them. And uh, that allows us to properly bend and release that fish effectively. Woo! Alright, put that rod on that rock on. This last 39 hour trip we saw big red groupers. Look at that hook right there. Anywhere on the right. More fish as well. So, pretty cool fishing trip we had here on the 39 hour trip. You can see there in the background. It's killer good weather. Some beautiful fishing opportunities. And all around it's a really good trip with a large variety of fish. We got plenty of opportunities here coming up for that 39 hour trip. Tuesday, you get him up and get him in. Tomorrow, I'm going to take a trip. Join us. Join us this Tuesday for that 39 hour trip. And you get an opportunity to get him back on the wall. We can get a steel shot from the video. Shady spot. Yeah. <laughs> Is the fish on the shady spot? Uh, I see man. some porgies coming in. That's right. We got some keeper on here. Afternoon, you gotta do what you gotta do. Get porgies, whatever you can to keep. I see deep color on. Looks like a red grouper to me. Yeah. Oh, oh, he's a keeper. Oh, he's a He's close. Uh, uh, nah, he's, he's gonna be short. Nice fish, though. Tell him to come back and visit next time. Hello, how are you? Y'all enjoying yourselves? Yeah. Well, we're going to uh, look at some more of these videos. And uh, right here we got a lot of 39-hour photos. Let's hop into those and show you guys what these guys caught on this 39-hour trip. Had a lot of gags. We had to catch and release, vent and release. Uh, but we had a lot of other good fish too. We've been seeing a lot of these big mangrove snapper. The mangrove snapper bite on this last trip was really good. We're hoping for another great mangrove snapper trip on this $299, $70 off 39 hour trip that we have Tuesday, May 14th, two days away, guys. Lots of big mangrove snapper coming up, some porgies, trigger fish, scamp grouper. Unfortunately, those trigger fish did close, but we're still catching plenty of other good eating fish. The scamp and the red grouper were pretty prolific on this last trip. And uh, man, are those scamp grouper good eating. This is one of my favorite eating fish. Some people are saying they can't hear me. Let me turn up this volume a little bit. Uh, can you guys hear me better now? 
I'm hoping the microphone will pick up a little bit better for me. I don't know what happened to our mic volume. Testing, testing, testing. Is that better? Oh, yeah. The mic got turned down somehow. So can you guys hear me better now? I think so. All right. So sorry about that, guys. So the scamp grouper bite has been going really well. We're catching a lot of big scamps, and these scamp are so good eating. Really, really enjoy catching those scamp grouper. This is one of my favorite eating fish for sure. Uh, really, really unique fish and super, super cool looking. They have super green eyes to them, and uh, their patterns on them are super unique. I uh, really like those scamp grouper and lionfish. We've been catching a lot of these lionfish. If you haven't eaten a lionfish, uh, the lionfish is one of my favorite eating fish too. It's definitely in my top five up there with uh, scamp grouper for sure. Those lions are super good eating. And uh, some more trigger fish, big red grouper, lots of red grouper. The lionfish kept coming. We've been seeing razorfish, creole snapper. Almaco jacks, big scamp grouper, big red grouper. This guy caught a t-shirt. If you guys can't see that right there, that is a uh, FWC tag. That FWC tag has a number on it. And if you fill out the little postcard and send it into the FWC, uh, you get a free t-shirt. So not only did he get a nice big fat keeper grouper, he got an undersized grouper with a t-shirt attached to it. So Really, really cool fish there. Another nice red grouper. The red grouper bite was pretty good on this 39-hour trip, as you can tell. Uh, but overall, good time. Lots of good people. And again, we got a super light 39-hour trip leaving day after tomorrow, Tuesday. And instead of $369, it's only $299. But you got to book ASAP. You got to book tonight. You can use the uh, coupon code TBFC. And uh, that's going to allow you to get that $299 special. Again, T, B, T as in Tom, B as in boy, F as in Frank, C as in cat, or Tampa Bay Fishing Club abbreviated. That's how you're going to get that uh, special deal on that 39-hour trip Tuesday. But let me show you the 39-hour ca uh, catch uh, from today. And uh, I think you guys will enjoy this. Good morning guys, Captain Dylan Hubbard here at Hubbard's Marina with another 39 hour catch. We've got some big red groupers, some nice scamp, some yellowtails, some vermilions, some porgies, some big vermilions too, some big yellowtails mixed in there, some Almaco jacks, a little bit of everything in this pile. Nice, nice variety, another light load of people and another big pile of fish. Looks like a great trip, Will. How'd you guys do? I uh, good fishing. Uh, we did most of these big mangroves were at night this time, as opposed to in the daytime last week. Uh, almost all of the mangroves were at night, and then we we did decent on the mangroves, yellowtails at night, and that gave us a little uh, buffer to go out and try to get some groupers in the daytime. Try to and, do something a little different during the day. Yeah. Nice catch. We had some big groupers on this trip, and I don't know if they were jags or blacks, but I had two of them, and they were some of the biggest ones I've had on in a long time. And Just I saw unstoppable fish. Yeah, bad ones. <laughs> and uh, I saw a guy break a big hook on one. We had one spot where he hooked some big ones. Breaking like a 10 on hook? Yeah, a 10 on hook, 100 pound test. Woo! And uh, hopefully we get back on those things when they're in season for sure if they were gags. Yeah. June 1st coming soon, huh? June 1st. And uh, the big groupers to me right now are like in the dead bait. Like we call some big blue runners out there and a bunch of small bonitas, and they were eating the big pieces of that. Yeah. So uh, if you're coming out in red snapper season, it's good to have some big dead baits for the grouper and for the red snappers too. Nice. That's nice. what I can gather from this trip. Now we have a super light load next week, Tuesday, Friday, and then Tuesday again. Three light trips in a row if you want to come join Will and get a big pile of fish like this. Good job, guys. Nice pile for sure. All right, guys. Keep in mind, guys. We have our live stream show tonight. Uh, that we're live obviously already watching the live stream show, so we're going to skip ahead. We're going to skip out of this.
you guys don't need to hear about the live stream show that you're watching right now, right? <laughs> oh man, but I do have another cool video to show you here real quick. This video is from Salt Strong. Uh, we did that Salt Strong filming trip not too long ago on the Flying Hub 2 where we were out there catching Red Snapper and filming a Red Snapper mastery course with Salt Strong. So uh, Red Salt Strong posted a video to their Facebook and YouTube channel from that trip. And this is a video of Captain Anthony getting worked by what he thought was a big Goliath grouper. So he was going a little hard on it. It ended up being a monster amberjack. But you can see that Penn Senator and that Bull Bay Hubbard's Marina rod going to work. And um, it's a really cool video because it shows you how we fight a big fish. Now, Anthony was going a little harder uh, than I would recommend. Uh, and you'll see what I mean here in just a second. Uh, typically, once you get the fish up off the bottom, you got to kind of slow it down a little bit and finesse the fish. Anthony went hard all the way to the surface and kudos to him because I don't think I could have kept up this type of stamina, but you'll, you'll see what I mean here in just a second. So let me get this thing started. And uh, Richie is also catching a big fish at the same time. So not only is Anthony catching a monster, but Richie's catching a monster too. So check out this video from the Flying Hub 2 12-hour trip where we were out there with Salt Strong having a good time. It's a really cool video. Some big fish if you haven't seen it already. Anthony's got the behemoth on right now. This is a 9 knot reel with a 100-pound rod. Anthony used a whole side of a bonita a whole fillet of bonita and that fish just hit him so hard it took him to his knees on the rail and still smoking that drag that is a fully locked down nine knot reel this is everything in his power using the come on baby come on get that fish in here oh that is a big big fish if this is a grouper species this is going to be one to write home about Get that fish in here. Small, quick pumps, as smooth as he can, is the trick. If you need to and that fish is running, you can use See how Cam Anthony's using the rail there? That rail is your best friend. When the fish is digging really hard and you just can't pull up on that thing, or when the fish is just really big, you set the foam, on the foam of the rod on the rail there just in front of the reel. You don't want to set it too far forward or the rod will break. But as long as you've got that first six inches right in front of the re uh, reel, the foam right on uh, the rail, you can use your rod as a lever and it really, really helps bring those big fish up from the bottom, especially when you're having trouble and that fish is schooling you. Put the rod on the rail and you can use your other hand to slow down the drag if you have to too. So it's kind of a drag assist and it helps you kind of pump that fish in there. So watch Anthony use this technique to beat this fish. Use the rail, dropping down to one knee, the great method to get that fish up here. Captain Anthony putting in work on this fish. He's got him up off the bottom. So now that he's up off the bottom, he's gonna slow it down a little bit, trying to get a little bit more finesse. And there he goes back down to bottom. Oh, that is a big fish. Fully locked down nine. You can see Anthony using his other hand, his left hand there, to put his fingers on the spool. And that's helping control the drag. So not only is his drag locked down, but his fingers are also uh, holding that spool, trying to stop that fish from getting him in the bottom and breaking him off. Why not real? Anthony's going to be tired after this one, boys. Yep. Where's that piece you got? <laughs> This is probably the fish that just smoked us all. Oh, <laughs> be careful. It's a new rod, man. <laughs> oh, that is a big dog. Let's get that fish to the boat. Oh yeah, Richie's got a nice slow pitch wow. gag. <laughs> yeah, boy. Dude, Rich. That was on the j slow pitch jig. So Rich got that gag on a slow pitch jig. Look at that reel he's using. That is a big caster reel. It's so small. That rod is so light. It's like a little toothpick with a bait caster on it. It looks like he should be fishing in a bass pond, and he just caught about a 15 to 18 pound gag with it. He's on the 
Brother. Bitch jig. You want me to hold the rod while you lip him? Yeah. I um, gotcha. You got it? Yep. Watch this come in real quick. Got it. Is that your brand new? You know what? Uh, um, what? Gaff? Yeah, let me lift Gaff. So Richie's got a slow pitch jig on there. That's how he caught that big old gag. And uh, he's using a slow pitch rod, and he's only got maybe 40, 50 pound test as a top shot. So what we're going to do here is lip gaff that gag. So basically just put the gaff through his lip like you were putting another hook in him. And that allows us to get that gag on the boat to handle him properly, make sure he gets vented properly, and gets back down to the bottom safely and quickly and efficiently. So we're not gaffing the fish. These gags are out of season until June 1st. But we're making sure that he gets back down to the bottom safely so after June 1st we can go back and get him. Luke, can you hand me the gaff? Yeah, yeah Lukey over here catching snapper on the other side. Yeah, he's struggling. <laughs> <laughs> nice lip gaff. Dude, look at that. Woo! That is a fish, Richie. Yes, sir. That fish is almost as tall as you are. <laughs> Woo! Look at the size of that sucker. That's how we deal with you. Hold him out in the sunlight. There you go. Oh, man, that is a monster hey, fish. First, baby. Brother. Coming back for that. Get him, Anthony. So long story short, now Anthony we are a this solid. Fish. Here's where it gets colored. A monster jack. Woohoo! <laughs> Look at the size of that. Oh Look at the size of that fish. Oh, it just came unbuttoned. Perfect hook release. Perfect hook release. We're gonna have to lip gaff him so we can vent him so he doesn't die. Perfect lip gaff. Perfect lip gaff. You need help, Ant? Yeah, Let me in there. Oh my god. Oh. <laughs> ah! <laughs> I was wicked tuna this month. You got him? Yeah. Woo! Yeah. yeah, boys. Nice fish, dude. You got to hold that sucker up. <laughs> that is a beautiful oh fish. That is oh a big Come on, man. Jack. I can't even get him in the picture. I'll hold the tail while you hold the head. <laughs> you got him? Yeah. Oh, Woo! God, that is a dude, fish, boys. Yes. All right, hold on. That was a cool video. Salt Strong does a good job for sure. And uh, that was a fun trip. We had a great time out there catching some big fish. So I appreciate Salt Strong sharing that video for us. It's always a good time to catch some big fish, even if you have to release them. But luckily, uh, gags open June 1st through the end of the year. Uh, Amberjack are open August, September, and October. We're going to go back there and catch those big gags in Amberjack and uh, get them to the boat this time. But we skipped over Big John. Big John Martin's going to talk to us a little bit about that 39-hour trip and uh, tell you a little bit about what we've been catching out there and uh, what we have to look forward to Tuesday on that super light 39-hour trip coming up. How you doing, John? I'm, I'm great, Dylan. How about yourself? Doing well, brother. How was that 39-hour trip? Man, well, the weather was just like you see it here right now. It was uh, very few clouds. It was beautiful. The seas were about a two-foot chop, which to me is perfect. A lot of people, you know, they, they uh, mistakenly, I think, want it to be flat calm. But I can tell you that's not necessarily the best fishing because it's harder to get an anchor heading without the wind to, to guide you a little bit. And also, it's not only cooler, but it seems like the fish bite better when there's a little bit of chop to it. So be careful what you wish for if you're wishing for it to be flat calm because you may be having a nice trip but not that good of fishing. I, I, I think it's better when it's a little choppy. But the fishing was pretty solid throughout. The, uh, the mango bite was probably one of the better at, during the night that we've had in a while. Uh, it was, it, contrary, it's funny, every trip is different. Last week, we had a really good mango day bite. This trip, not so much. They basically bit at the times you would expect them to at night and uh, in the uh, evening before we came back. In the middle during the day, not so much. 
but uh, big porgies. There was a lot of big champagne porgies, pink porgies, some people call them, uh, quite a few of them. And uh, some pretty decent beeliners. We didn't see some of the giants we have been seeing, but uh, a pretty decent size of them. There were several nice scamp caught, which is always a treat. And when I say nice, I'm not talking about ones you have to measure, ones you just look at and go, man, that's a nice fish. I mean, they're, they're uh, jackpot contenders. And there were uh, several nice red grouper caught. Uh, I would say the biggest one was probably about 12, 13 pounds, but there was a couple that were close several more keepers, more keepers than we've gotten recently. I guess the good news for people is that the red snapper and the gags are out there and waiting for June 1st. Now, whether they know what the calendar says and turn and hide, I don't know, but right now they're definitely out there as we had two come in over the rail, over 20 pounds that were successfully released. So uh, hopefully we'll see them again. I personally caught a couple of gags. I've been using light tackle because it's not gag season. So I've lost several that I know are gags, but I told them I would be back, but I did catch and release a couple of them. We, uh, let's see, was there anything unusual? I not heard, really this trip. I heard there was some kingfish circle in the boat. We didn't get a ton of them, but they were pretty thick. They were, and they were not hungry, which was interesting because literally they would park out uh, kind of like how snooks sometimes do at a dock where they line up. There were kings literally just sitting there and we'd throw a piece of bait in front of them without even a hook and they would look at it, just watch it pass by. They were just checking things out. They weren't really feeding. We got most of the kings uh, during the troll on the way out and a couple once we were out there. Now i tell you what was on fire uh, on the trolling was the Spanish mackerel. For the first, I'd say 10 miles or so, uh, they were coming in left and right. And so if you're into that part of it, it's a lot of action. They're actually quite good eating. And uh, so we had a lot of Spanish mackerel early on leaving. The king mackerel were, were pretty steady throughout the trip. No tuna this time, which is a bit unusual. I think I had one hooked up and it just spit the hook after I fought it for about two minutes. Huh, that's a little frustrating on the tuna side of things, but uh... That's pretty cool about those kingfish. Pretty unique to see them stacked up like that. Normally they're moving so fast you hardly get a chance to see them. Yeah, it's just sometimes I don't know what triggers them to stack up like that and not eat. But uh, when they're swimming, when they're moving, they seem to be hungry. But when they stack up like that, which they occasionally do, I don't know exactly what's motivating them. But they're just trying to check us out or whatever. But they don't eat when huh. it's like that. But we caught them mostly uh, during the day flat line and, and trolling a little bit on the way out. Okay, so you did get a couple kings on the flat line, but for the most part, the kingfish action was a little tough. Yeah, it wasn't uh, as hot as it has been, but uh, but they're out there. They're definitely out there because, like I say, they were just cruising by, hanging out, checking us out, but they just weren't hungry for some reason or another. All right. Cool. Thank you, John. I appreciate it, man. Well, as always, man, like Captain Hubbard says, like your grandfather before you, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just you're too, too busy. busy. Have a good day. <laughs> and John always does a good job. We always enjoy having John on the show here. Uh, we're going to talk to Captain Joe real quick, and then we're going to look at some of those 12-hour uh, night snapper photos. And then we're going to look at some inshore fishing photos and do an inshore fishing report with some really cool tips and tricks on how to catch snook and uh, trout and a bunch of other inshore fish too. So stay tuned. We got some cool stuff going on and we're going to give away free fishing trips. So you can't beat that. So let's listen to Captain Joe. How you doing, Joe? Good. Good morning. So uh, how was that fishing? I know you were out in the hub yesterday. I saw that big old hogfish you guys caught. Yeah. Yeah, I, I had an eight hour on the hub yesterday. How'd you guys catch that big hog? Shrimp. Shrimp? Live yeah, we shrimp. were shrimping all day. We only got, well, we got a few. That was the big one, though, the one that was on Facebook. It was well over 20 inches. But uh, we stayed steady on the shrimp all day, and it was slow. It was a little dicey out, but... Uh, by the end of the day, we, we made a pretty good trip out of it. Yeah, that weather's been a little funky this week, huh? Yeah, it has. It's been weird. Yeah, they've been calling one thing, but it's been doing a complete opposite thing. Yeah, yesterday we were expecting basically flat calm, and it was two to three foot all day long. Yeah, definitely been a little crazy weekend with the weather. Well, not as bad as last weekend with that big storm. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> 
So, uh, how's the fishing been besides uh, yesterday? I know you've been doing mostly the shorter trips this week. Have you guys been seeing those kingfish or mackerel near shore? We're getting a few here and there. It's definitely slowed way down compared to what it was. We're just uh, picking one up here and there on the way out and maybe one up here and there on the way back. Smokey's been getting a few still on the flat lines on the uh, 10 hour trips. Yeah. Um, but as far as the half day fishing goes, it's steady as usual. You know, we catch a bunch of grays, a hogfish here and there. This black sea bass bite was real good for a while. We were catching really big sea bass for a, a couple of weeks. It's starting to slow down a little bit. We're still seeing a few. Nice. Now I know uh, June is around the corner, but we got a lot of light loads on that 12 hour extreme, that 39 hour trip. You running any of those coming up? Um, yes, I am. We're all kind of preparing for June 1st to come around. Everybody's excited, but we uh, have to physically and mentally prepare for those two months. It's going to be pretty crazy. But yes, I will be running uh, a 12-hour extreme here and there because Anthony's going to need a break. And uh, I'll hopefully also be doing a 39-hour is what I'm hearing uh, here and there so that Garrett and Brian can have a break as well. Cool, man. But we're definitely excited for June 1st. We're all jacked up. <laughs> tired of throwing those things back yeah going to exact our revenge right yep <laughs> well cool man you're running the half day today yep going out there after those hogs and those mackerel and the kingfish and a ton of grays that's huh? right very cool well i appreciate your time joe have a good trip today thanks man all right captain joe there talking a little bit about the fishing this week the 12-hour night snapper did pretty well out there Friday night. If you haven't checked out our 12-hour night snapper, this is kind of what you can expect. Uh, some mangrove snapper, some yellowtail snapper, some vermilion snapper, and some others mixed in there. Uh, it was a really, really good trip there Friday night. It, w it wasn't crazy. It wasn't totally epic, uh, but it was overall a really good trip. They uh, caught probably about 70 head of mangrove snapper. They caught about 40 to 50 nice yellowtail snapper, and then they caught some vermilion snapper mixed in there as well. So some guys did really, really well on the mangroves. Some did okay and then caught more vermilion. Those mangrove snapper really tend to set apart a more experienced angler from a little less experienced angler just because those mangrove snapper are so tough to get chewing and on this 12 hour night snapper trip this past friday the bite was pretty good overall but it started very slow it was really tough to start out on the trip uh, but luckily right around uh 11 11 30 they ran into a little squall line some of those afternoon thunder showers moved offshore there friday night they had a little bit of rain a little squall line pass them and on the back side of that the fish really turned on well for us and the rest of the trip the bites were pretty strong and pretty consistent so luckily it was a great trip turned out to be a good trip i mean and uh, they ended up catching some nice fish there but it definitely was a slow start on that 12 hour night snapper but they got some big mangroves as you can see here's captain bobby who ran the boat holding up one and kyle our new uh first mate uh who's running some of these 12 hour night snapper trips and some other trips too uh they had a good time and they caught a lot of nice fish on that 12 hour night snapper if you haven't checked out that 12 hour night snapper trip it's only 129 dollars it gives you about uh, seven to eight hours fishing time about 25 to 35 miles from shore those mangrove snapper are so quick biting you really need a high gear ratio reel like 40 to 50 pound test on that 12 hour night snapper the double snell five aught hooks is what i would use and that thread fin plug that's the killer you cut the head cut the tail trim the belly on that thread fin put that double snell rig in there drop it to bottom you got to constantly hold bottom you want to make sure you're on the bottom, flat still on the bottom. You're not going to get those mangroves to bite. And as soon as you feel even the slightest little bite, you want to start cranking like a madman because those reds or those mangrove snapper are super quick biting. So as soon as you feel them, you got to start turning the handle and uh, putting the power or putting the peg down so that way you can hook up on those fish and then also i like using a little bit of braided line and then a top shot because those mangrove snapper they're going to shake their heads and go crazy and if you don't have that top shot in there it's really easy for those mangrove snapper 
to uh, go ahead and spit that hook. And you got to keep constant pressure. So not only are you reeling fast and keeping constant pressure, but you also want to make sure he doesn't have a chance to spit that hook. So uh, it's a little tricky, but you'll get the hang of it for sure. So uh, we talked a little bit about the inshore fishing. Uh, we're going to talk to Brian now, get an inshore fishing report, and then look through some of these photos here real quick. Good morning, Brian. Good morning. How's it going, Dylan? How you doing? Doing pretty good. How's the fishing been? It's really good. It's heating up on the beaches. Yeah, I know the uh, snook are definitely starting to kind of stack in the passes. Uh, I know your buddy Eric didn't want me to tell people, but we've been telling people for oh, a while. Oh, yeah, you got to let them know so they come in here and buy the pinfish. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the pass yeah. fishing for snook has been really good as of late. Uh, we've been seeing a lot of them, mostly at night. What do you think? Um, They're always out here. Uh, the night bite's easier because you can use heavier gear and uh, you can really get away with using that 60 to 80 pound leader and uh, still getting those bites. Whereas during the day, you gotta throw that 15, 20 pound leader and you're gonna lose a lot of fish. Yeah, yeah. So. It makes it a little bit more difficult during the day. Yep. But the daytime, you have to use the lighter tackle because of the water clarity. Oh uh, yeah, fish are just smart during the day too. I don't know, during, during the night, they get in a real frenzy out there. Yeah, it's so. a little easier to catch. Yep. I heard a story about some uh, big cobia busting some bait inside the pass. Have you been seeing any cobia on the beaches? No, but I hope I do. <laughs> yeah, come yeah. across some big ones, huh? Yeah. So. Now, I know you have a little bucket over here. What are you yeah. going to show us this morning? I'm going to show you guys a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about what's going on inshore. Um, right now, obviously, the passes are full of snook, and uh, the best baits have been on the outgoing. If you uh, go to the inside of the pass, drift uh, pass crabs through there you'll see snook busting on the pass crabs especially over this next month um, this is what i mean by a pass crab you'll see them floating through and you can you can scoop them up right out of the water uh the best way to hook these let me grab a hook out of here is uh you'll see a little part right here that doesn't have any flesh just work your hook through that you'll stay super lively cool thing about this I would use very heavy gear overkill for snook when I'm throwing these I use my 8,000 with uh, 65 to 100 because yeah. there's a lot of tarpon starting to show up as well uh, over at blinds pass we saw a guy catch one well over 100 pounds two days ago Wow so uh, they the tarpon are starting to roll through pretty good so when you say drift through the pass so you start inside the pass and you let the, the tide just push you out of just the like the rest of the crabs are doing you'll see the crabs getting busted and uh is there a certain time of the month that you're looking for um not really outgoing tide seems to be when it's hot with the pass crabs and a lot of the bridges too because uh especially the bridges where like fort DeSoto, where people are dipping those crabs you know that those tarpon and snook are sitting on the fenders waiting to ambush anything that comes out so uh just matching what they're eating is really important because when those, those pass crabs come through for a short amount of time and those fish love them and they take advantage of it You'll catch everything from giant sheep's head to snapper. Everything eats pass crabs. Nice. So Very unique. Yep. Now, I saw you had some fiddler crabs down there. I wanted to yeah. see. A lot of people ask about how to hook those fiddler crabs. Right. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about the fiddler crabs because this time of year, not very many people are buying them because, I mean, they're like, oh, the sheep's head bite's not on fire. That's not true. There's a different way to fish them. If you go on the flats, there's schools of sheep's head everywhere. Um, how I like to hook these is you'll fill a little spot right here where it's soft. This hook's way too big for this, but then you just slowly, slowly push that through. And with a smaller hook, it'll come out the back very nicely. This one kind of cracked the back over there. But uh, yeah, the back, uh, anywhere near a pass, the sheep's gonna move their way in. So uh, you can wade the flat or go on your boat with a trolling motor and you'll see little schools of them, just pods of five or 10 of them that are all together. And they're, they're spawned out and a little skinny, but they're hungry. Yeah. So, now, I've been doing very well on sheep's head. For hooking those fiddler crabs, it's kind of the base of the tails, or the base of the legs is what you're looking yeah, for? Yeah, the little joints right there, you'll see uh, there's little soft spots. That way you're you're not just drilling it through there because you'll crack it and then you'll lose your bait and have to put another one on. So you're going up where the leg joins with the shell, up through the bottom, out the top? Yep. Got it. Yep. All right, cool. Yes, sir. So what other bait are you going to show us All there? right, the other baits I'm going to show is as far as artificial. Sight fishing snook on the beach and uh, going near passes to flats. Because right now is a really, May is a stage up month where a lot of fish are out of the pass. There's a whole lot more coming that aren't going to get out here until June. 
sometimes July. And uh, this is my favorite bait as far as sight fishing them. It's small, uh, it's a good bait to cover ground with because uh, I mean, anything small I guess will get eaten by anything. Trout, redfish, snook, you figure out what's out there with this bait. Can you hold that up a little bit for me? Yeah. So that's a... It's a Z-Man. Z-Man paddle tail? Yep. Just there a little cool. three inch minnow. And how I hook these, go in this side, come out the back right here. They're a little tricky to get to stay on the jig head. Uh, a lot of times I like to put some super glue on the jig head before I stick it in there and it'll stay all day. So you're basically threading that hook through the front. Can you show them one more time? It yeah, was kinda, I kinda absolutely, missed it. absolutely. My bad. No, you're good. So you're kind of working that hook. Yeah, right you'll see the there's a spot meant right there for where your hook goes. You just work it right to the back. And over time, you'll be able to gauge this really well. I've been doing it so long, I have it pretty perfected of where it's going to come out the back. And then make sure you bury that thing in there real good with the barb so it stays. I got gotcha. you. So, yep, that's probably my favorite. Go all around, find the fish on the flats bait. It's nice because you don't have to do any work keeping bait alive or catching bait. What size uh, jig head was that? That was an eighth ounce mission fishing. Mission fishing. So, yep. So an eighth ounce jig head is all you need? Right. You want it basically a real slow sinking bait? Exactly. So you're just working the top of the grass flats, trying not to let it sink into the grass? Yes, sir. Gotcha. Yep, and the other thing is, is uh, the, pin, the bite's been awesome on pinfish as well as pigfish, especially the pigfish, if you can get them. Just uh, show you different ways I like to hook these. If I'm trying to get them to um, stay out of rocks, I'll hook it through the tail right here. That way you have pretty good control over your bait when it, where it's trying to swim. Mm -hmm. If you're not so worried about that and you're wanting to keep your bait lively as possible and as real, the presentation as real as possible, you go right through the nose. And these have been working awesome on the um, ends of jetties, like the corner out here right at John's Pass. If you drift these through here, there's not a better bait than pinfish and pigfish for those snook. Nice. So. Now, yep. when you're fishing in the tide, when the tide's rushing real good, I find that hooking through the nose or up underneath the jaw out the top of the face seems to work better. Yeah. And that's just because the bait's able to stay his nose into the tide? Right, that way it's not getting, your not, line's not getting, uh, if it's in the tide and you hook it through the back, it'll start doing swirls like this. Yeah. And your bait will get, or your line will get all tangled up. And the bait doesn't look natural. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so when, you're, when your tide's running, you gotta hook it through the nose or up underneath the face. Yep, you can get away with the tail hook there too, but yeah. uh, definitely not through the back Okay. when uh, the tide's ripping. Gotcha. So, yep. Cool, man. Any other tips you got for these guys? Uh, get out fishing. The bite's as hot as it gets right now. May is probably my favorite month to fish because the fish are all over the flats. They're all over the beaches. They're everywhere. When it gets hotter, you're gonna be limited to nighttime and those first couple hours in the morning, so. Yeah, when the water gets real, real hot, those fish get kind of lethargic, huh? Yeah, and you end up having to use pieces of dead lady fish for the snook because they're just so slow. They're not wanting to chase things. So right now, you can go out in the morning, use top waters. They're hitting everything. Their fish are just hungry right now. Very so, cool. Yep. Thanks, Brian. Yeah, no problem. So that was Brian. He is our uh, bait expert. He catches all our live bait for us, including the fiddler crabs, the white bait, the pinfish, pigfish, all that kind of stuff. And he's also a super, super good inshore fisherman. Um, but we're going to show you some photos here from our inshore report, show you guys what's been going on inshore. Uh, this is Alex Ruiz from Winter Garden, Florida, showing off some snook from the south shore of Tampa Bay. Uh, I was catching these snook on some big live baits. Uh, Alex Ruiz again nice snook he caught 30 snook in two days with his buddy uh, so the snook bite is definitely going very well on the south shore of tampa bay this is brian the guy who was doing that video before showing a monster mangrove now believe this or not i promise this is true but that mangrove snapper was caught in tampa bay he's long arming it a bit but that's a solid six pound mangrove just as big as we catch on our 39 hour trips. And he caught it inside Tampa Bay around the Skyway. Those rock piles of the Skyway hold some monster mangrove snapper. And as the water warms up, the mangrove snapper really gets stacked inside Tampa Bay around the Skyway too. 
you don't normally catch them this big, but Brian got really lucky. He was fishing for gags, catching and releasing gags, having a good time with his buddies at night. Ended up pulling up this monster mangrove. Here is a nice snook from Bruce, Bruce Crook uh, from Green Cove Springs, Florida. Him and his wife did a private charter with Captain Tyler Capella, and uh, they caught a lot of nice snook. You're going to see some more snook from Bruce Crook and his wife here shortly. Here is Butch uh, Canerium. He is our uh, dock master slash uh, office tackle expert. Uh, he works in the office and on the dock. Nice sandy snook he caught on the beach there. Uh, here is a speckled trout by Butch Canerium as well. The speckled trout, the snook, they're definitely out there on the beach. The daytime beach fishing, you got to use lighter tackle, 20-pound uh, test line, 20-pound test fluorocarbon, really. And uh, you can sight fish those snook with that Z-Man paddle tail uh, that uh, Brian showed us earlier. Or live shrimp works really well out in the beach as well. Just free lined. Uh, this is Clinton Marks from Lando Lakes showing off a redfish. Caught this uh, on the northern part of the south shore of Tampa Bay around the mangrove lines using a Z-Man paddle tail. Nice snook by Donald Boggs. Now this one was caught right inside John's Pass at night with a flare hawk jig. Obviously another flare hawk jig snook right on the north jetty of John's Pass by Eric Flores. Here is a nice red, uh, this is a monster red, bull red from Eric uh, from Ruskin. Again, South Shore, Tampa Bay. Our friends from Salt Strong, Eric's one of them, supplied a lot of good photos for that Fox 13 show. Uh, so because we have so many good inshore fishing photos from our Fox 13 news show, we figured we might as well share them with you guys for the live show. This is Eric Witted uh, from St. Pete showing off a monster snook. You can see his jig there in the background, a big old bomber hard bait uh, in the pass at night. It's been working really well. At night, you can get away with using heavier tackle, especially around the bridges and rocks of the passes. Those big snook are stacked up. You can get away with using 60-pound uh, test, 50-pound braid, and a bigger rod and reel. This is jo Jeff Groves uh, from Tampa Bay Fishing Club. Most of the time he has his tongue hanging out of his mouth, so most of you won't recognize him. Uh, but he's been catching monster paddle tails, or uh, monster triple tails, excuse me. Uh, this is Tampa Bay. It's a rough day in Tampa Bay, but uh, Jeff caught this nice uh, triple tail right there in the bay. There's a lot of triple tail inside Tampa Bay right now and along the beaches. We catch these triple tail on our five hour half day and 10 hour all days in private charters mm -hmm. because on our way offshore, we'll pass over some crab traps and we'll see these triple tail hanging out underneath them. Captain Frank, Seabass, Smokey, they're all known to catch these triple tail on the way out and way back from those offshore fishing trips. But Jeff Groves is definitely one of the Tampa Bay masters of these triple tail. He catches a ton of them for sure. Um, but those are some inshore fishing photos. I thought I had one of Bruce Crook and his wife showing off that tarpon that they caught. Uh, let me see if I can. There was some more tarpon photos. Here's Jamie Whiteside showing off a tarpon he caught inside John's Pass using a flare hawk jig. Uh, here is Joe McFadden. This is Alex Ruiz's buddy uh, showing off a big snook. They caught this in about a 10 inch mullet. They used a mullet for bait and caught this monster snook. Here is Bruce Crook right here in the salt strong hat and Captain Tyler Capella showing off a juvenile tarpon that Bruce pulled up on his uh, private charter with Captain Tyler. Uh, Bruce and his wife submitted all these photos for our Fox 13 show, so we figured we might as well show them off. Here is Bruce Crook's wife, Norma, showing off one of her many nice snook. It's got to be good when a husband and wife go out fishing together on a private charter. That's pretty cool. Uh, they sent me a lot of photos. They had a really, really good trip there this week. Uh, but those are some of the inshore fishing photos. Wanted to show you here real quick. We're not going to spend a lot of time on these, but I was getting the show together and some people asked me to show some old school photos. So I don't know if you guys can recognize that guy, but that is Babe Ruth and one of his fishing trips at Hubbard's Marina way back in the day. He's a fishing guy. Babe Ruth liked his fishing, and uh, this is one of the many uh, kingfish trips that he used to do back in the day with my grandfather. 
This is my grandfather, Captain Wilson Hubbard, hanging out on uh, the old Hubbard's Pier when we used to be back in Paso Grill. We moved from Paso Grill to uh, John's Pass in 1976. Here is an old coupon for a $5 all-day fishing trip and a $3.50 half-day fishing trip. Uh, that price is no longer valid, by the way. <laughs> but pretty cool right there. Here's some old fishing photos, some big Goliath grouper. Not allowed to kill those anymore. And uh, I have a feeling we had a part to do with that. We killed a lot of them. Some old school tarpon photos, big cobia there, some big black grouper, monster Goliath grouper, some redfish and snook from one of the inshore fishing charters back in the day. Another shot of that big Goliath, some big old gag grouper, more gag grouper, lots of big gags. Look at the size of that gag on the bottom. Those are not war or those are not Goliaths. Those aren't Warsaws. Those are gag grouper. And they didn't go far from shore back in the day. So pretty cool. All these big grouper. We have a lot of photos from back in the day, and they're always fun to look at. Hopefully uh, you guys enjoy them. There's 1968 killing tarpon. We don't kill tarpon anymore either. This is my grandfather and a bunch of amberjack from one of his uh, long range fishing trips. There's the old Hubbard's Pier back on Passa Grill. Some half day fishing, some mackerel. This is when we moved up to John's Pass in the 70s. Uh, this was back when we had our own dolphins. My grandfather here actually had a pen out in Shell Key. He used to own part of Shell Island, and he actually had dolphins pinned up out there. And uh, he did a dolphin show, took people out there and fed the dolphins. Pretty cool. Lots of history at Hubbard's Marina. We started back in 1928 from rowboats with cane poles. That's how long we've been doing it. Uh, so really, really blessed to still be doing it today. And it's all thanks to you guys for making it happen. Uh, and we appreciate y'all hanging out with us. So I think it's time to give away a free fishing trip. We're going to give away a free five-hour half day for two. Stay tuned, though, guys, because we got more fishing trips to give away as well. So don't go anywhere yet. We got some more fishing trips to give away. But we're going to give away a five-hour half day for two to start, get you guys warmed up, and keep you, keep you on your toes and uh, then towards the end of the show, we'll give away that 10 hour all day for two. And uh, I don't think we're going to get up there, guys. But if we get a uh, 300 live viewers, we're going to give away a 39 hour fishing trip. Uh, but let's see who won a free five hour fishing trip. Everybody tonight wins $70 off our 39 hour trip May 14th. Uh, but John, we uh, I should have showed the screen. Winner is John <laughs> We is uh, from, uh, oh, he just commented, awesome. John We is he won a five-hour half-day fishing trip for two. You guys didn't show, uh, you guys didn't see me pick the winner, so that was a little suspect. So we're going to do that again. We're going to give away a second five-hour half-day for two uh, just because I kind of screwed that up, and I was a little late tonight. So we're going to spice things up and give away another five-hour half-day, so... Let's see who wins the second five-hour half day for two. Sean McGibbon. Hello from Ohio. So Sean from Ohio has won a, er, a five-hour half day fishing trip for two people. Along with John Weiss. Or however you pronounce your last name, John. I apologize if I butchered that. I, uh, we still got some more fishing trips to give away, guys. So stay tuned. Uh, but we're going to get into your fishing questions. Hopefully, you guys have some questions for me. And uh, hopefully, we can talk fishing. So, as far as what's going on now, a few people ask, what's the best tackle to flatline on those fishing trips? Well, this is a great time of year to go flatlining. What flatlining is, is it's basically free lining. So, all our fishing trips are bottom fishing trips Everybody's out there fishing on the bottom for grouper, snapper, and whatever else is biting. Um, but you can flatline or freeline for some of those pelagic fish. 
We catch anything from kingfish to tuna to wahoo to sailfish uh, to covia and a little bit of everything out there on the flat lines. And the best tackle to flat line with, in my opinion, I like using a four-aught reel. I like using one of my snapper reels with a lot of line capacity because that way it guarantees if I catch a really big fish or if I hook uh, into a big kingfish, I have a chance to land it because uh, I've got a lot of line capacity. So I like like 30, 40, 50 pound braided line and I like that uh, spool fill with that so I have a lot of line capacity if I hook a big fish. Uh, now, as far as what tackle to use on the top end, it kind of depends on what you're targeting. But most of the time, our flatline rod, especially this time of year when the Kings and Max are around, we're using what's called a stinger rig. So that's a wire leader, typically around a uh, 44 pound wire. It's a size four wire leader and treble hooks. We have about 12 to 18 inches of wire. Then we have our first treble hook. Then we have about four to six inches of wire and our second treble hook. The distance between the two treble hooks is dictated by the bait you're using. If you're using a bigger bait, you space those treble hooks a little bit further apart. If you're using smaller bait, you tighten up those treble hooks a little bit. Um, but that's the idea behind the stinger rig. Now, if I'm targeting kingfish, wahoo, those stinger rigs are a great idea. If I'm targeting uh, tuna, cobia, or if I see a billfish, I really would prefer to just have a fluorocarbon leader. Now those fish will hit a stinger rig with wire, but typically if the water's really clear, they're a little too smart for that wire. So it kind of depends on the fish you're targeting as far as what you're gonna have on that flat line. But as far as your bait goes, live blue runners, live sardines, even a dead thread fin works really well. Now, when we're bottom fishing, especially when we've been bottom fishing a spot for a little bit of time and you've got that chum line going, you're catching and bottom fish and bringing them up to the surface, you create this kind of natural chum line and those pelagic fish will swim up that chum line. And when that occurs, that's when they're going to bite that flat line rod. So really, really fun time out there to go flatlining. And this time of year is a great time for it because often it's when we see those kingfish, tuna, and those other species as well. So that's kind of what I would recommend is a snapper rod and reel for uh, flatlining, like a four-aught reel. Uh, but you can also use a big spinning rod. A lot of people use like a 6,000 series spinning rod and reel. Uh, something you want to have a lot of line capacity. That's the trick. The more line capacity, the better you are. That way you can make sure that you have a chance to land that really, really big fish. Um, but... Who knows, kind of whatever you're comfortable with is what's best, but I would prefer a conventional reel because I have more line capacity. Uh, but it, it's up to you, whatever you're more comfortable with. Another question uh, that we just got from Elise was, uh, if you catch your limit, uh, but then I catch uh, another bigger fish that's over my limit, can I keep my big fish instead of the other ones that I use to reach my limit? It's a good question, Elise. We get that question a lot during red snapper season. And the answer is no. Once you've limited out, you cannot take fish off your stringer and put a bigger fish on it. Once you've limited out and you caught your limit of fish, you're done keeping fish on your stringer. Now, if you catch fish and someone else doesn't have one on their stringer, then you can give your fish to someone else. But if you limit out, if you catch uh, four red snapper and you're done, and uh, the next red snapper you catch, you either have to release or give to someone else who hasn't caught their limit yet. So what some people do is they won't catch their limit, their weight, and they'll play the game hoping for that bigger fish. But then sometimes you, that bigger fish never comes, and then you end up ending the trip without catching your limit. So it's one of those games you have to decide to play. But as far as we go, once you're done, you're done. Once you kill... It doesn't matter if you kill them and put them in a box and a cooler in a bucket. Once you kill your limit, you're done uh, catching more of those fish for yourself. These fish are rec or this these trips are recreational uh, trips, so you're on your own recreational limit. And once you fill that limit, you can't keep any other fish for yourself, unfortunately. Um, but it's kind of your your game to play if you want to 
catch almost your limit and save one spot for that big fish, you're welcome to. But it's a dangerous game because sometimes you come back to the dock and you didn't fill that limit because you were keeping that one spot open. So it's kind of your call to make. But during red snapper season, when you're only allowed two fish per person per day on our 39 hour trips and 44 hour trips, you have that two day limit. So you're allowed four for that trip. But on a 12 hour extreme, you're only allowed two. So some people are throwing those 10, 12 pound red snapper back, hoping for an 18 or 20 pounder. And then at the end of the day, they only have one on their stringer. So it's definitely a great question. And during red snapper season, it's always a big debate. But for us, the answer is very simple. If you kill two, if you kill your limit, you're done. If, uh, if uh, you're, you're releasing them alive and you're venting them and getting them back down to bottom, then your limit is still open to catch. So what other questions? Alex Perez said, how many rods is too many rods on the 39 hour trip? Really for myself, I would only bring about three rods, maybe four, maybe five rods. It depends on if you're trolling. If you're trolling, you might have an extra rod and have more like five. Like for me, I have my light snapper rod. I'll have my two speed reel and then I'll have my big nine knot reel. So I have three rods for bottom fishing. Then I might bring a flat line and rod and then I might bring a trolling rod. So five rods is really the max that one person needs to go bottom fishing on a 39 hour trip. And for our other trips, it kind of changes, but really you don't need more than five rods per person. And if you limit the amount of rods you bring, you're gonna be a lot happier because you have less stuff to drag back and forth. During red snapper season, keep in mind guys, they're only open for two months out of the year. And red snapper is only one of the 20 to 30 species that we catch out there. So it always cracks me up. Like for example, this coming Tuesday, two days from now, I'm offering $70 off a 39 hour trip. Instead of $369, it's only $299. And we only have 14 people booked on it. Whereas June 1st, two fish open up, just two different species open up. And we go from having 20 people on the boat to having sold out packed trips. And people wait all year to go on a sold out packed trip when they can go this time of year and catch almost as many fish and have a great time and have no one on the boat. So this time of year when there's no one on the boat, you can bring 30 rods. I don't care because you're going on a boat uh, that's licensed for 120 people and there's only 20 people on the boat. But when you come during red snapper season and the boat's sold out and we have 50 people on the boat, then we start questioning how many rods you bring. And uh, we really would prefer you to limit the amount of rods you bring once we start getting those longer or those busier trips. It's kind of like the, the top shot on a long range trip that's more filled up like a red snapper trip. You have to use a long top shot and we get a little bit more strict making sure that everybody has a long top shot. But on these lighter trips, when there's not many people on the boat, you can spread out so much that your top shot can get a lot shorter and you can vertical jig and you can flat line and you can knock a rig. And on those busier trips, you can't knock a rig. You can't flat line. You have to use a longer top shot. It kind of limits what you can do on those party boat trips. Now, if you book a private charter for Red Snapper, then you can do whatever the heck you want. But on those party boat trips, when it gets busier, you just don't have the flexibility to do things like vertical jigging or knock a rig in or flat line. And whereas this time of year, when you have just as many, almost as many fish out there to catch, just except for red snapper and gags, you can do whatever you want. So it really, really changes a lot depending on how many people you have on the boat. Now, don't get me wrong. Robert McMiller said, Robert McMillan said shoulder to shoulder doesn't sound fun. Keep in mind, guys, when I say a trip is sold out, that boat's licensed for 120. We have 78 rod holders. We only allow up to 50 people on the trip. So the boat's licensed for 120, 78 rod holders. We only allow up to 50. And we do that because we want to keep the quality of the trip high. Now, back in the 60s, my grandfather would put 100 people on that trip, literally twice as many. But nowadays, we limit the number of people on the trip 
to keep the quality of the trip high. And also, we want to make sure you're happy. We guarantee an excellent client experience with superior guest service. And throughout the Red Snapper season and almost every 39-hour trip, I'm there when you leave and I'm there when you get back because I personally guarantee that you have that great experience and excellent uh customer service and I want to make sure you receive that so uh, we work really hard to make sure you have a great time so don't get me wrong those more sold out trips when we're full yes we're full but it's not overcrowded by any means but it's more full 50 people is a lot more than the 14 that we have booked for this Tuesday so that's what I'm trying to communicate uh let's see here besides that super light 39 hour trip i do want to remind you guys about the fox 13 show that we're doing every friday fox 13 uh around 8 30 8 40 a.m we're doing that live fishing show with russell Rhodes on good day tampa bay if you're from out of town you can just go to google let me show you here real quick so you know what i'm talking about so if you're from out of town and you can't turn on Fox 13 and watch, you can always just Google Fox 13 News Tampa Bay. And when you find their website there, just click on the Fox 13 website and then you can click live. And that's going to let you watch the news live. So you can watch that Fox 13 show right there live. And it gives you a chance to watch our fishing show uh, even though you're not here in the Tampa Bay area. So we do that every Friday morning uh, about 8.30 to 8.40 a.m. You guys got to watch and tell me how I do. It's uh, interesting being live on TV. It's a lot different than being live here on Facebook. Uh, but keep in mind, we also need photos for that Fox 13 thing. So if you, uh, if you ever catch a fish and you want to get on that Fox 13 thing or be featured right here on this live show, you can submit your photos to us at my email address. The easiest one is just info, I-N-F-O, at hubbardsmarina.com. Email me your photo, include your full name, where you're from, and what you caught it on, and a little bit about what the tide was doing. And uh, we'll throw your name and photo into our fishing reports. We'll include you on our live stream show, and we'll feature you on Fox 13's Tampa Bay, uh, Good Day Tampa Bay show when we talk to Russell Rhodes. So looking forward to that uh, this Friday. But this Friday, we're not quite sure if Fox 13 is going to have it because they have something special this Friday. But so far, it's been every Friday. I don't know if it's going to be this Friday, but next Friday, we'll for sure be back. But I'm trying to talk them into having it every Friday. We'll see how that goes. The next question I heard was from Sean McKibben. He said, is Red Snapper season open in July? Red Snapper season is open June 1st until August 2nd at 12.01 a.m. So when you're fishing on a federally permitted for hire boat, this is a recreational federal for hire season. Opens June 1st at 12.01 a.m. And it closes August 2nd at 12.01 a.m. So you have to be at the dock by uh, August 1st at midnight. And you cannot start fishing until June 1st at 12.01 a.m. So that is the recreational federal for hire red snapper season for this year. Now, if you're on a private recreational boat, if you're on your own boat, your buddy's boat, that is a different season. That's controlled by FWC, and that season is July 11th through July 12th. Uh, it's 31 or 32 days. Uh, so it's a little different for private recreational. We're federal for hire. We're federal, uh, federally regulated and federally monitored, and uh, our season's a little bit different because of that. Oh, uh, let's see here. We went over. Oh, uh, now some of you guys might notice. Uh, we're going to show you here real quick. Hopefully you guys enjoy the live show. I mean, we've got over 200 people watching here between Facebook and YouTube. So I hope you guys enjoy the live show a little bit. Um, but we want to show you here. And when you're on Facebook, you can go to Hubbard's Marina dot or just search Hubbard's Marina. When you search Hubbard's Marina, you're going to find under pages our logo. This is our page. 
And when you're on the Hubbard's Marina page, guys, you can always click events. When you click events, it brings up our live fishing show. You'll notice we have today's show. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can see this on your screens. Oops, zoomed in too much. So you'll notice here we have today's show, and then we have next week, May 19th show. Now that May 19th show, guys, is our last one on this event. So we added a new event uh, starting June 9th, the end of May, Memorial Day weekend. I'm going to be out of town at my cousin's confirmation. And then the beginning of June, I'm going to be out of town for a National Marine Fisheries meeting. So our next live show will be uh, our next live show will be May 19th. And then after May 19th, we won't have another one until June 9th. So we need you guys to check out that new event and we need you to uh, like it for us, guys. We need your help there. So uh, make sure you check out that new live stream event. I'm going to pop it into uh, the, the chat right now. And if I could get your help, guys, make sure you click the event and click going for us. I'm popping it into the chat for both YouTube and Facebook. Click that event and make sure you click going or click interested, whatever you want to do. But click on that event and click going or interested for me. That'll help me a lot. Tell more people uh, that our next live show is May 19th. And then the next one after that is June 9th. Also, don't forget about Bass Pro Shops. We have our Bass Pro Shops. Not only do we do Fox 13 shows, but we also have our Bass Pro Shops event this Saturday, May 18th at 2 p.m. We're going to have a Bass Pro Shops seminar, and we're going to give away more free fishing trips there. If you enjoy this live stream show, guys, the Bass Pro Shops event is a lot like it, except for we only do questions. So you raise your hand. You ask me what you want to talk about, and I talk about it. So that Bass Pro Shops event is really, really cool. So hopefully you guys can join us for that. We'd love to have you out there at Bass Pro Shops May 18th. Uh, hopefully some of you guys can join me there. Uh, Nick Trapani asked a great question. He said, on the regular 12-hour trip, would you expect to catch gags? Now, that's a really good question. What Nick Trapani is asking about here, let me show you. On our website, there's three different trips where you can catch uh, Red Snapper and Gag Grouper. Uh, these are all our different fishing trips here. You've got our five hour, 10 hour, or five hours, 10 hours, 12 hours. We got three different 12 hours and then 39 hour. During Red Snapper season, we do not run this 10 hour all day. All our 10 hour all days turn into uh, what we call our 12 hour day trip. So instead of the 10 hour all days, we run these 12 hour day trips. So uh, what that the reason behind that is a 10 hour all day is only fishing 15 to 20 miles out. It doesn't get deep enough for red snapper. So we turn the 10 hour all day uh, during red snapper season to this 12 hour day trip. So instead of going uh, 15 to 20 miles and only fi and fishing for six to seven hours in 60 to 100 foot of water, we fish 40 to 60 miles out. You get much shorter fishing time, but you get a chance for those red grouper. You get a chance, or you get a chance for red snapper, excuse me, and you get a chance for those keeper gag grouper. But it's mostly a chance, and it's the shortest trip closest to shore that we offer for a chance for those red snapper and maybe some gag grouper. During the summertime in June and July, gags are super deep, super deep. The best time to catch gags are in the cooler months, October, November, December, when those gags come closer and there's more of them and they're more prolific. In the summertime, it's hard to catch gags. You gotta go super deep. So the best uh, red snapper and gag grouper trips in the month of June and July are these three right here, the 39 hour, the 44 hour, the 12 hour extreme, all those trips fish 70 to 100 miles, 70 to 100 miles. The 44 hour trip fishes even a little bit further and you get a lot more fishing time as you can see. So when you compare the 12 hour extreme to the 12 hour night, besides just the price, the 12 hour extreme fishes easily more than two times further and the boat goes easily three times faster. So you get more fishing time, almost twice the amount of fishing time. 
So you go two times further, three times faster, and you get twice the fishing time. So that's why the price is a little bit different. Oops, didn't mean to click that, but hopefully that answers your question there, Nick. Yes, you can catch gags on the 12-hour day trip, but it is our shortest option during red snapper season for a chance at those red snapper and big gags. Whereas the 12-hour extreme, you have a much better shot at catching plenty of big red snapper and maybe a keeper gag. And the 39-hour trip, you got 20 hours of fishing time. So that's a really, really good option to give you a shot at those gag grouper. Uh, another couple questions I keep seeing is about the red snapper limit. You're allowed two red snapper per person per day. They have to be a minimum of 16 inches. And again, they're only open June 1st to uh, August 2nd. Uh, so you're allowed two per person per day. On our long range trips that span more than 24 hours, the 39 hour, the 44 hour, you're allowed that two day bag limit. So you're allowed four red snapper on those trips. Uh, no, you can't get a three day bag limit. A lot of people say, well, the 39 hour leaves Friday. <coughs> excuse me, the 39 hour leaves Friday and comes back Sunday. Why can't I keep three days of red snapper limits? You can never keep more than a two day limit on a recreational fishing vessel. So two day limits, the max, but at least it's more than the one day limit of two per person per day. So there you go. Uh, all right. We answered a lot of questions. We showed you a lot of videos. Uh, I think it's time to give away that 10 hour all day and see who won that 10 hour all day fishing trip. So let's see if I do it right this time. Who won that 10 hour all day trip? Let's see. You guys ready to see who won? Keep in mind, guys, before we sign out, don't forget about that Bass Pro Shops event. Uh, May 18th. Don't forget about our Fox 13 shows. Make sure you submit your photos for that Fox 13 report. And then tune in next week, May 19th, for another live stream fishing show. And don't forget about that 39 hour trip Tuesday. You can win a, uh, you, or don't forget about the 39 hour trip Tuesday. It's $70 off. And look at this, Mr. Mike. Bic won a 10 hour all day for two people. Congratulations, Mike Bick, for winning that 10 hour all day for two guests. Hopefully, we see some of you guys on that 39 hour trip this coming Tuesday. It's got a super light load, only about 15 people, and we're going fishing. So, hopefully, you guys can come with us. If you want a chance to do a 39 hour trip, this is the chance to do it. It's the first time we've ever discounted this trip, and it's a ton of one-on-one -on -one time with the captain and crew. So come out and join us this Tuesday uh, for that 39-hour trip. Book tonight online. Use the coupon code Tampa Bay Fishing Club, abbreviated, so TBFC, uh, where you see that. Do you have a coupon code box? Enter that tbfc coupon code and it'll give you 70 dollars off that 39 hour trip you can book it now at hubbardsmarina.com or call us tomorrow we open up at 6 a.m you can excuse me you can call us and book it tomorrow morning as well or shoot me a message on the page and i can book it for you now as well we'd love to get you booked for that 39 hour trip i don't want to cancel i want to go fishing so come out and join us. Remember, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too busy. We'll see you next weekend at Bass Pro Shops on Saturday, May 18th. We'll see you next weekend, Sunday night, 8.30 p.m. Same place, same bad channel uh, for our live stream show. Have a great night, guys. Have a great Sunday. Thanks for watching. And remember, if you're too busy to go fishing, you're just too darn busy. Have a good night, y'all.